I've done a lot of Zelda randomizers over the past few years, and you might have heard me beg for good RNG, or luck, in basically every single one of them. So that got me thinking, how fast would a randomizer truly be with perfect luck? Well, I set out to find out. I first decided to roll a completely random seed with all the settings enabled in Wind Waker. This includes dungeon items like small keys, maps, compasses, etc. to be scattered all over the overworld, including no starting sword as well, and all salvageable treasures in the game would be part of the item pool. And this leads you with over 300 possible locations for all the items. And that does not include the locations that are locked behind other items. Now, this usually takes me about six to eight hours from my experience when just going in blind. And after this, I also made sure to equip a nice swag outfit and generate a spoiler log. This file basically lets you know exactly where every single item is located which normally you would only use if you, for example, got stuck or thought you couldn't complete a seed. So how much faster could we beat this knowing where all the locations are? Well, I sat down and I started routing. The first thing I needed to do was roll multiple seeds. I wanted to make sure that a couple of locations would not be required, such as Savage Labyrinth, the Goron trade, or watering all the Deca trees. Withering trees is the Pearl. Oh, I'm so dumb. All right, reroll. But after a lot of rolls, I finally found a seed that met all of those three criterias and I got to work. And after two hours of routing and checking every possible location, I felt that I found a pretty good seed that was overall very optimal with how I routed the whole thing. So now you might be wondering, how fast can you complete a max settings Windbaker randomizer with perfect luck? Well, let me show you after a quick word from today's sponsor. Are you looking for a rich and varied gaming experience? then look no further than Final Fantasy XIV Online. Final Fantasy is an amazing game, and the amount of content you get for free on the free trial is insane. It includes the first expansion of the game, Heaven's Word, and it allows you to reach up to level 60 with a limited playtime. And the best part, the free trial and the full game are available right now on both PS5, PS4, Windows, Steam, and Mac. And let's say you decide afterwards, you know what? I wanna push past level 60, or I wanna explore some of these other expansions, then don't worry, because your character and all in-game progress will carry over if you decide to upgrade. And all jobs are available for one single player. There's no need to create new players just to try out a new job. There's dungeons, trials, raids, you name it in this game. So what are you waiting for? Sign up right now, push for level 60 with no time restrictions with the free trial. The link is in the description of the video. Thank you so much, Square Enix, for sponsoring this video. Uh, but either way, starting off immediately, we're gonna be heading over to Dragon Roost because thankfully it happens to be that this seed has the skull hammer placed in the very first chest of the dungeon. I want to get a couple of items, and not only are they located in locations that require the skull hammer, such as for Sing Fortress, I also will be without a sword for a while. And it is very good to have some form of melee damage when you don't have a sword. Now, obviously, to be able to even beat a Wind Waker randomizer, you need a couple of things. You need all eight Triforce pieces to create the full Triforce, four sword upgrades, and then I will also need three arrow upgrades. And once I have all of that figured out, I then also need all the additional items that are required to just get around. So that's why, like, many items will be required that technically are not part of, like, those ten items. And there's our skull hammer. Uh, so we're actually immediately gonna head over to for second fortress. I am missing a couple of items to properly be able to complete for second fortress, but with some interesting glitches and techniques, I should be able to get around the kind of checks that the game has in mind. We're immediately gonna head over to the side here because I do not have bombs, so I can't actually explode the gate to have access. But with a trick known as a Wind Waker dive, by basically taking out the Wind Waker at the exact same time as you're walking off of a ledge, you're able to get way further underneath the water than you would you should be able to. And I'm then going to use the skull hammer that I obtained to be able to actually enter rooms and areas I'm not supposed to, such as this place. And I'm immediately going to drop down here. I thought I was gonna get hit by that, thank God. <laughs> Anyways, by heading down here, I will immediately be able to get the Deku Leaf. Now, normally, I wouldn't really be able to do much in this situation. Thankfully, we should be able to get around here with the use of Leaf Pumps. When you have your Leaf out, you're slowly losing height every single frame. However, when you initially pull out the Leaf, you see that kind of animation right there? 
that actually gains you some height. What I'm actually doing when I say that I'm leaf pumping is I'm pressing A to remove my leaf and then I press the leaf button again to take it back out. And if you do that with a perfect rhythm, you're not really losing any height whatsoever. And now we have everything we need. We immediately gonna smack the switch open and we are going to enter the fight. Normally when you're fighting Hellrock, you would want a couple of items. You would, for example, want the boomerang to cancel one of his uh, wind attacks. Uh, you would want the sword to damage him, and you obviously want the skull hammer as well to be able to break his armor. This would technically be possible with the items I have, even without any glitches, but it would be incredibly slow. Thankfully, there are some really cool mechanics for you to be able to get around that. The first things first is obviously end the first phase of this uh, fight by knocking him down here. Now, before I head up to the second place, I'm going to achieve something known as storage. I'm going to climb up this ledge, take out the Wind Waker to fall in midair, and then cancel my Wind Waker exactly three frames before I land. This leaves me in a weird state where I can do certain things with your character uh, when you're not supposed to. Uh, and in this case, I am in a cutscene state, but I'm still able to walk around with Link. That allowed me to jump down the tower as this cutscene was progressing. And you can see, I can, for example, take out my Wind Waker right now and, like, pause time. I have full control over Link. What I'm going to do is just wait down here. I'm going to cancel this glitch out by taking out my Wind Waker once the cutscene is done. Then I'm going to roll over to this jail cell and stand right here. And what should happen is Helmrock is going to fly down here. Because this is only a one-way solid wall, he should be able to just pop through the wall right there. Bam. And now he's going to try and walk to me to actually attack me. Now, normally he would get close to me and he would uh, initiate a second, basically, mode in the AI. However, he cannot do that because he can't reach me. You can see it glitched us an animation so oh yeah, he definitely, he definitely was packed. But he can't do that. So, because he's just infinitely walking towards me, it doesn't matter that I have a really slow and weak skull hammer. I can just knock him over and over and over again, which usually would only have one or two hits in per cycle. I get all ten in, in a row. Bam, the fight is done and I've officially beaten Helmrock King. Staff fast. You probably noticed that I got a skull necklace from that, which is a little bit weird. I'm gonna explain later why I chose to beat this boss, despite only getting a skull necklace here. Trust me, it was not because I need a skull necklace. And now, once we're done with Forsaken Fortress, we're gonna go ahead and immediately warp to Forest Haven. There is a system with multiple items in this game known as the mail system, the mailbox. The mailbox will have multiple items, and one of those things is that Grandma's letter, which is obtained by basically giving her a fair so that she doesn't die, uh, is actually a required item. And this is also part of why I wanted the Skull Hammer, because with the Skull Hammer, I can deal a lot of damage to these enemies very quickly, and I'm able to get the bottle. So we're going to get that out of the way and kind of just set ourselves up. Then we're going to jump down here and warp over to Greatfish. Normally, in a 100% run, you will see like a hookshot trick that we use here, just for like a tiny small optimization. Uh, you can also see we just barely can make it with the amount of magic you usually have left here. So it's a pretty tight route, but thankfully it works just perfectly. And that is also the first one out of eight Triforce pieces that we need in the run. Another reason we want to go here right now is because, like I said, we want to save Grandma. And cleverly, I realized that Western Ferry is closely located to Greatfish Isle. And not only is there an item that I need from Western Ferry, but on top of that as well, 20 small fairies spawn that can all be caught in a bottle, which is what we're going to be using for Grandma. And there it is. We just got the hookshot, which is a very good item, and it is definitely going to be useful throughout this run. Uh, once we got that, we're going to catch one of these fairies that I was talking about, and then we're going to head over to Outset, and it is time to head over and say hi to Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Saved! Remember earlier how I mentioned that I chose to go for completing Forsaken Fortress as early as I possibly could, despite only receiving a Skull Necklace from it? Well, that's because of our sister. Not only is this a grandma run, this is also a whole family run. It includes her sister. Because once you complete Forsaken Fortress, your sister will send you a thank you letter for rescuing her from the jail cell. And in this specific randomizer, that letter will contain a piece of cheese, which is very required. And grandma's letter will be even more useful in short term. Because unlike a piece of cheese, which, you know, is a required item but doesn't lead to anything, we get a 
bow and arrow from our sister Ariel, meaning that we already have a form of damage in long distance. I've also tried to plan this out as well as I could because I realized that not only was outside a required island to go to, I also needed to go to the left side where the golf minigame is, and I also needed to go north to Diamond Step. Now, Diving Step requires the hook shot to be able to complete quickly, which is why I routed it in this specific way. I really try to take everything into account to make the most possible optimal route to obtain all of these items in. You can also see I just got the grappling hook, and the grappling hook is going to be one of the most useful items in this randomizer. Because if you think about it, there is about 50, 60 coordinates in the ocean, and each one of them has at least one treasure chart connected to it, it means that we're going to be having a lot of item checks that are going to be salvaging treasures. And by having the grappling hook, it enables us to have access to all of those locations. Another reason why I got this skull hammer is because it's usually really slow to go up to this chest in the top right over here. However, there's actually a shortcut you can do with a jump slash item like the skull hammer or the sword. If you head over here and you jump on this ledge and you do a jump in a midair jump slash right at the peak of your jump, you can just barely make it over the wall and get this chest super quickly, which will give us the power bracelets, which is also going to be very important for Earth Temple coming up later. All right, now we're going to head over to Forest Haven. And this is unfortunately a place where I was required to add a two-trip bombile. It was so essential to be able to get the DQ Leaf early because it opens up so much in the overworld. But because I didn't have the power bracelets, I did not have access to actually entering the dungeon, which I now have. So we're actually going to go back a second time. And you're going to see why I made this riding decision in just a little bit once I get the item. Oh yeah, definitely take note, chat. This is definitely going to be on the test. Okay, dude. Oh my god. This is very unfortunate luck. <laughs> Get in. Just barely got him from the correct angle to not make him fall down. I was a little bit scared about that. Alright, beautiful. Both switches down. And now we can get the first item. Now here's where I got very fortunate with the routing. This is actually going to give us treasure chart number 36. Now, why was I so lucky? Since all of the treasure charts are randomized and where are they connect to? I could get very screwed over by a lot of sailing time here. Thankfully, what happens to be one of the luckiest draws ever is that treasure chart 36, which is a bomb bile, leads to the island right next to Bombile, which is Bird's Peak. And not only that, but the Bird's Peak rocks also leads to an amazing item that, trust me, I definitely want to get as quickly as possible. The sword, that is right. We already got our sword figured out. It is all said and done, easy clap. And now we can head over to the first major location that is packed with items, which is Forbidden Woods. Now, if you have been around speedrunning for a long time, you're probably actually going to feel some nostalgia, like feel strong, man, towards this dungeon right here. Because I'm about to do a modified version of a Wind Waker route for this dungeon that was used in 2013. Now, immediately you're going to notice that this dungeon is going to be completely broken because I can break these eyes with uh, the hookshot and the bow. I'm going to try and keep my my arrow count to as low as possible, and you're going to see later why. But originally right now, we're going to go down here and immediately, bam, one piece of cheese. That's three down and five to go, which is incredibly fast, by the way. Remember earlier how I said this was a max settings randomizer? Well, like I said, that also includes small keys, which is a bit of an issue because there's actually a good amount of locations in this dungeon that is locked behind the one key. And the one key that I actually need is located at a very bad place. I basically will not be able to in any convenient way get it. It's not in this dungeon at all. It's across the entire overworld, not happening. By obtaining the glitch in a storage and then storing a opening animation of a chest, it's going to temporarily change Link's hitbox. But since it can never complete the animation of opening the chest, because I didn't allow it to by the glitch I just performed, I will be able to stay in this chest opening state, which basically shrinks Link's hitbox. You can see I can basically go inside of the wall. And that has a couple of different consequences. One of which 
is that slopes and steep sur uh, surfaces behave very differently. And here's your first example. I'm going to walk up this <laughs> giant basically tree on the side of this wall. I'm going to side hop and take out my leaf. And I'm going to leaf pump to land on the side and walk up here. Now, I'm going to do a backflip and take out my leaf. Do a couple of leaf pumps to maintain my height. And then, I can just walk up this wall right here, skipping the small key requirement down below, and immediately enter this room. And then, we're gonna open up this chest to kill this glitch off, because we don't want to keep it anymore, and we immediately get the fire and ice arrows. Now, this is actually one of the best hidden chests, in my opinion, in all of Wind Waker. I didn't even know that this location existed until I started doing randomizers all settings. I'm not kidding. Despite having speed a 100% category of this game for a very long time, I never knew of this item location. Because it's so high, you don't really see it unless you like look up in free cam, which I don't know why you would. But thankfully, this random hidden location has a piece of cheese. I have ran into a bit of a problem. I need to enter the boss room because I'm required to beat the boss in this dungeon to be able to get all the items. However, there is no way for me to get the boss key and the usual place you actually would obtain chest storage is not viable without bombs, which I don't have at this point. So I'm gonna do this very old technique by getting chest storage in this room, clipping out of bounds, jumping through the floor to get back up exactly where I wanna be, and then I'm gonna go all the way around here, and we're then going to enter this room, and we now have chest storage enabled, heading towards the end of this dungeon. Now, I think it's finally time to explain why I needed these arrows. I do not have the boomerang, and in this game, it's too slow to cut down all of the cords with the grappling hook or the hook shot like you do in the Wind Waker HD speedruns, because it's just a slower animation. And the only item that can even come close to cutting him down quickly enough is the bow and arrow. But it's also incredibly difficult to nail a one cycle on this boss in the time you have with the sword. And it also takes a lot of arrows to cut him down, even if you can get double hits in. So that's why I try and keep arrows, because if I happen to fail a one cycle here, I need to cut him down again. My run is literally dead. I won't be able to at all. It's completely over. So I only get one chance at this. Which is also why I'm going to quickly do this. I'm gonna do a glitch known as soup glitch right here. Uh, never mind. I guess I'm not. That's fine, I guess. Either way, I'm gonna drink my soup to give myself double damage, which is gonna make it way easier to one cycle this boss because I'm not playing around. Uh, what I was supposed to do right there, but I was press the button for drinking the soup on the same frame I paused so I could like re equip my items so I didn't actually use up half of my soup, but that's fine. You're also gonna notice that we just got a sword upgrade, by the way, from killing this boss, which is incredibly useful. So that's already the master sword. You can also see we have a sick sword. This is not the sword you would usually see in this game. Uh, this is actually from Minish Cap. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy the sword upgrades. And now we're going to warp to the main island of the game. That is right. We're actually going to make a trip to Windfall Island. Believe it or not, Windfall is included. So you might imagine there should be a ton of items here because it's the main island. Uh, there usually is, but this seed did not have a lot of roles for them, so we're not going to do too much here. We are going to head over to where the rich people live. Also, a little bit of a fun fact, by the way, about these rich people that live in this house that I always think is really funny is Nintendo often names every single character in their video games. But if you actually look into the official names for these two characters, the daughter here is called Maggie, and the father over there does not have his own name assigned to him. His official name in the game is Maggie's father. That's it. He doesn't get his own name. It's just known as Maggie's father. If you take a picture and get the full breakdown of him, that's his official name. He doesn't have one. So I don't know why this one character got screwed over compared to everyone else in the rest of the game. But nonetheless, we don't care because Maggie is a goddamn Giga Chat handing us another piece of cheese. Now we are going to do something very nice. We're going to start this quest and we are now going to do a little workout. That's right. If you're watching the stream right now, stand up. If you're watching this YouTube video, stand up. It is time to work out. Here we go. And one squat and two squats and three squats and four four squats and left and right and left and right and one and two and three and four <laughs> uh we just have to wait for it to run around here there, there's nothing to do so we just have some time to spare and now i'm gonna go here while she's running around and check mail though and hopefully i should have a letter from orca which will give us another sword upgrade 
I almost got spotted. Holy crap. Also, in the vanilla game, when you almost get spotted, Link makes a meow sound effect like a cat. I like how instead, Vadi just has an evil laugh. And she's like, oh, okay, everything is fine. Let's have move on. Either way, that's the Iron Boots. Windfall is done. There's nothing else we need to do now. While you're at Windfall, you also just want to go to Paw Print because it's close by. And I actually do need to go to this Wizrobe cave to take down all of these Wizrobes. I'm actually going to let this enemy spawn something on purpose. Uh, just so that I can get some of my arrows back. I really hope they drop a pearl with some arrows. That's... Uh, very sad and unfortunate. I guess it is time to start hitting them a lot. So uh, I guess let's speed this up and just hookshot them for a while. And we just got treasure number 13. Uh, after that, we are immediately going to head up to go to Crescent Moon Island. And it has a very important item for us that you might not expect from a planned routed out randomizer. It is a small key for Earth Temple. Unfortunately, no matter how hard you want to try and work it, we will need that small key. Trust me. Now we're going to sail to Overlook. And we also need to prepare by opening up treasure number 13. And while we're in the menu, we might as well open up number 6 as well. Hi, YouTube. If you're reading this, leave a like. That is true. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to see more awesome content just like this. And for all of that work we just went through with that wizard robe cave and by sailing here, all of this was for a rupee bag upgrade. Because unfortunately, the RNG gods did not bless us with the best of lucks when it came to one of the salvageable treasures because it put it behind a Triforce chart, which requires 400 rupees to decipher, which means we need to actually get the wallet. Thankfully, it is very convenient that it was located at Overlook because at this part of the run, I don't have that many options for where I can get rupees from. Thankfully, this island actually has a lot of secret rupees in these pillars because it's quite hard in early game, which I'm still technically in, to get a ton of rupees. But by basically just entering and leaving here twice, I'm able to just barely get enough rupees to be able to decipher the chart that I'll need later. And now we're getting into Earth Temple. Earth Temple is going to be a pain. Usually it would have Command Melody and many other items to get through this, but I have none of that. So I'm going to have to get kind of creative in how I'm going to maneuver this dungeon. Normally here, I'm supposed to stand in the switch, use Command Melody to have her go over to the switch. But with some perfect leaf pumps, you can just barely gain enough height throughout this flying distance to be able to land on the ledge instead of like being way too low and hit being hit by the spikes. You can do the same thing on the way back. And I'm going to keep bringing Medley along. I'm actually going to be taking advantage of Medley quite a lot in this dungeon. Uh, usually you have mirror shield and you're able to just kind of go on your own. You don't actually need the companion. Here we're going to have her look at us and her mirror shield on her back is going to hit all of these characters right here without needing command melody. If you remember earlier as well, I ended up also obtaining a small key and that was specifically for this door right here on the left. Uh, for this room right here, I would normally need a lot of different things, but with a uh, nice with a precise timed uh, medley fly, let go and take out leaf, and then uh, cancel to be able to ledge grab that thing right there. You can just barely be able to do it. I just actually brain fart and just forgot. I'm stupid. I don't have the command melody. Now, there is another place right here that you're supposed to use command melody for. So right here, you're supposed to use her mirror shield slash harp, whatever you want to call it, and break these walls. Thankfully, if you place her here, make her follow you, and then tap down so she's not walking at full speed, but also not too slow, it just barely angled high enough to actually break that wall and be on it for long enough. Now this kind of allows to push this and get access to this next room. And this next room is where the item I need from Earth Temple is located. I need to somehow, you might be asking, get behind those statues right there. This looks like an impossible mission without Command Melody or a Mirror Shield. I can't get Medley up on the top ledge right there without Command Melody. Thankfully, there is a way around this, but it is incredibly difficult and made me almost not even want to make this route at all. Uh, we might take uh, many attempts to do this. There's an awful ledge clip that you can do with a bomb on this ledge, but I don't have bombs, so I can't do it, right? Well, you can use Medley for ledge clips, but this ledge clip is a part ledge clip roll clip 
which if you don't know means I basically have to properly set it up so I can get a partial allowance clip, not too much so that I fall through, but also not too little. And then I need to do a frame perfect roll to be able to actually get the clip. Uh, just barely not enough. So yeah, this is gonna be a uh, little painful to actually accomplish. Damn it! Okay, so now you can see the other big problem. I need to not only do a double frame perfect trick, I also have to have a perfect angle to be able to roll clip, but not with an angle that makes me jump back in a bound. Which is why this was something that I dreaded doing, but when I looked into where the mirror shield was located, I basically realized, nope, this is my only way. Oh! So close. Okay, we're getting really close. Okay. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, so close to clipping black into bounds! Yes! Okay, and there is the light arrows. And now we are out of here. Oh my god. Whew. Anyways, uh, fair to say, that's not used in any category in all of Wind Waker. Um, I came up with that while making this route. Because I was like, I need to come up with a new clip here somehow. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Alright, here is the one thing that I was considering make using another seed for. But I thought, you know what? I think we should have a fair representation of what can happen in, an, in a max settings randomizer seed. Which is that Shark Isle ended up being part of the seed. You're gonna see why. But out of every combat cave in all of Wind Waker, Shark Isle has about four times the amount of enemy spawns compared to any other combat cave. Uh, also, another great thing is that Cyclops happens to, however, spawn on Shark Isle, and he gives you a Triforce piece for defeating him, and it's perfectly located because you just got an arrow upgrade. This is also, by the way, why I ended up going out of my way to get Iron Boots. Iron Boots is required to be used to enter Shark Isle. There's a pretty high chance I die, which is, once again, why I really wanted the magic. And I'm also going to be using a lot of my light arrows here. So here we go. Starting off pretty cool, right? Not bad, right? This is not bad at all. Yeah, if only that was true for the rest of it. Uh, during this entire time, mini blinds are going to be spawning as I have to fight the actual enemies that are difficult. Thankfully, there will be a lot of arrow drops here. So I should be able to use a lot of my light arrows on the more difficult enemies. Like, these Dark Nuts are usually a pain to kill, but Light Arrows are helping us out a lot here. If I didn't have Light Arrows, this would be awful, which is why I routed it this way, too. Because there's no way I was going to destroy all of those enemies without Light Arrows and 3 HP. Thankfully, that gives us a Triforce chart, which is so exciting! <clears throat> yeah. Either way. Thankfully, we've already been prepared for this. We already got the rupee bag upgrade. We already got the rupees. And we already got the grappling hook. So, now once we're finally down with all of that, let's head over to Tingle Isle and decipher this chart, shall we? I forgot Tingle is still stuck in horny jail. A few moments later. All right, decipher this. Ho! Yo! Kling! I'm basically Tingle at this point. You noticed how I mentioned earlier that I didn't have bombs for that clip, so I had to use medley? The bombs were very out of the way. It was an issue that actually came up when routing this, which is that one of the essential items I need is actually from beating a watchtower, which is a big problem when you don't have the bombs, because you can imagine to break the cannons underneath a watchtower, you need bombs. Well, what a lot of people might not know is that you can actually use your boomerang for it. It takes a lot more hits, but you can actually throw the boomerang to break all of the HP down on a cannon. And that was how we were able to get around the massive headache and hassle that was the bombs, because the bombs were located in the very end of Earth Temple. Now we're gonna hopefully be the Swedish sniper. I don't know how I missed that easy one, but whatever. Pretty good aiming overall, we take those. And this should give us the seventh piece of cheese. That is seven out of eight done. Only one more to go now. It is time for the boomerang kills. Yeah, 
I don't know why. Don't ask me why. It explodes when you use the boomerang on them. There we go. And that, my friends, is how you skip bombs in a Wind Waker randomizer. And we just got another treasure shard. Treasure shard number 17. And now it is time to open up all of the mappas that I have. Bam. All right, treasure number 17. And that is the last piece of cheese. That is all eight Triforce pieces completely done. Easy clap. There we go, baby. And now there's only one item left to obtain. It is the final upgrade for the Master Sword, which should be located right here. That's it. That is every single item you need to beat the game. We got all of the sword upgrades. We got the light arrows. We got all the Triforce pieces. And we got the hook shot and the grappling hook, which is required for the climb to beat the game in the end. So now we have everything we need, and we can simply head down to Hyrule to try and beat the game. Oh yeah, I forgot. We haven't we haven't actually raised Tower of the Gods, so no Tower of the Gods here, but that's okay. And there it is. We got the fully charged Minus Cap Master Sword. We're breaking the barrier, and now we just have a few things left. Now, with the normal Wind Waker randomizer settings, the ones that are on by default, the trials are naturally open. So by default, the trials are open and you do not have to beat the four trials. However, I will want to make one thing very clear. Even if they were not open, this route would still work if you would like to try it yourself because you do not need bombs to do trial skip. All you need is simply put just a well-timed side hop and leaf pump to be able to do a roll clip uh, on one of the edges of the map, and you can just clip out of bounds. There's no problem whatsoever with doing this, uh, so it does not fundamentally change anything. Chat, do you want to see what really makes the difference between a top-level speedrunner and a new speedrunner? The frames of time save. Look at this. By sidling into the wall, you can hit the loading zone through the door, saving like a full nine frames. All right, let's hope that we can be the Swedish sniper here and get through this quickly, shall we? Sag. And three, first phase done. Uh, right here, there's a frame per trick you can do known as Crip Shot that allows you to um, basically get a double hit in. I have two attempts on it, so let's see if we can nail it. Fortunate, let's see if we can get it on their second try. Nice. And Puppet Cannon has been taken down. And now there's only one thing left to do, which is tap our way to the very end of this room. <laughs> All right, let's do it, chat. Let's do it. And time. There it is. One. 24 21 that is how fast you can be an all settings randomizer with perfect luck so to answer the question if you were basically having some dream luck over here how fast could you actually beat one? Under an hour and a half. Basically, TLDR, if you ever watch any future videos from me or any other creator where it takes us about six to eight hours to beat Windmaker, really what you should just be commenting is uh, just get luckier, forehead. It's that easy. But either way, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more awesome content like this, definitely be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel clicking down right there. We're pushing for 200,000 subscribers right now, so definitely be sure to subscribe. Also, if you can watch two more awesome Wind Waker videos or just random action in general, you can look on the screen right now. I'm not sure which video you're going to see, but trust me, it's probably good. Click it. Do the thing. Do the thing. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love you all Later, everybody. Bye-bye.